Hi, it's Jamie from the dailyinfusion.com. I wanted to bring up a practical example from my own life about how to deal with anger in a way that ensures that we don't harm ourselves or others. And this is a very challenging subject for me because it's something that has taken me time, even until recently, to get really honest with myself that while I don't believe I was projecting my rage and anger onto anybody else in my life anymore, at least I was aware of not doing that, I had yet to stop projecting blame and rage towards myself fully, whether it was with my judgments that cycled on in my mind or by actions that I took that were not totally pure in their intention or loving. And as long as I'm hurting myself in any way or disconnecting from what I feel underneath that rage, I am not actually ever going to be capable of really fully loving anybody else. Because if I don't know what it is to do that for myself, I'm just not going to be able to be fully honest and truthful with anybody else because I want to prevent anyone from seeing these parts of me. And I don't want to do that anymore. So... Recently, I had an experience where, a very humbling experience, where I recognized that I was really, really angry about many things, but one thing in particular that I didn't, that I kind of dismissed at first, and then I started feeling more and more about that situation, and I noticed I'm like really angry at this person, and I don't even know if it's valid or not, but I obviously have to deal with this because I don't want to hold on to these feelings anymore. I know what happens if I hold on to this. I likely will not project or engage anything with that person, but I might go into making an unloving choice and punishing myself. So in order to prevent that from happening and be fully connected to releasing this, I went for a walk. And I took myself to this hiking trail, hill area that was rather remote, and started stomping on the ground like a five-year-old and yelling and <laughs> physically moving this anger because anger is a sensation that really needs movement in order to physically be processed through us. And... I needed to do this with my full body because that's how much anger that was in me about this situation. So I stomped for about 15 minutes and <laughs> completely felt like, like my four-year-old self, which is actually a wonderful thing because I, I put myself into a position where like a four-year-old, I expressed and felt my true emotion, my true experience at that moment like a child would and does until they're taught it's not appropriate to show that to the world. And what is not appropriate is our projection of that emotion onto ourselves and others. That is not loving. However, the expression of true emotion is very loving because it's honest. If we are not harming ourselves or another and we're simply just expressing this, this energy through us, how is it not the most loving thing in the world to move it out instead of living with it so that later on we might project onto another being or make an addictive choice or an unloving choice or self-destructive choice or judge ourselves because we didn't want to feel it. And this is what happens when we are in a cycle of self-destructive patterns. We are not connecting or not willing to examine the truth of our experience, honestly, without judgment. Instead, we go into a place of judgment and blame, and it keeps us completely disconnected from having to experience that 15-minute tantrum. And I've been doing this a lot more recently, that in the moment when I acknowledge these things, I let myself cry it out, stomp it out, whatever it is, in a responsible way that doesn't harm anybody else or me. And this is especially important for anger and rage because they're our guide into preventing really damaging choices, whether it is within ourselves 
or others up until the global scale with people fighting horrific wars with one another because there's such discomfort about experiences that have occurred. I still will always probably have something to move through because I spent so many years avoiding a lot of things. And I'm okay with that because the more I do this, the less I judge myself because I start to see the benefit of how it feels after and I notice that I don't have the desire to hurt myself anymore. I just, the desire isn't there anymore, whereas it used to be a desire. And whenever we have a desire to do anything, our will moves in that direction and then we make a choice according to that desire. And judgment just leads us directly to it. It leads us to the behavior that harms ourselves, and then we feel that layer of shame, why did I do this again? And it's because we have a desire to avoid pain, to avoid 15 minutes of stomping our feet in the moment, in real time, as it's happening, because of what, whatever like we think people would think of us. And if that's a concern, I suggest that we take ourselves to a place like I did, which was remote and nobody was really around, and I allowed that to happen. And a couple months ago, I had an experience where someone really disappointed me with a situation. They showed um, what I intuited about them and were projecting their violence onto me with their rage. And I was disappointed to find out that they were not as loving as I thought they were. And after I got off the phone with them, I cried and raged and stomped and like kicked my feet on my bed for, I don't know, 20 minutes because I was upset and I'm not blaming the person for how they are but I do want to acknowledge that that the behavior they engaged in with yelling at me was not a loving choice and I can't do that um, and once I stopped doing that I had a tendency to go into harming myself instead and now something about getting really honest about in the moment, letting things just feel out of me has created a different desire, which is to be loving to myself because I want the truth at all costs because that's what's changing me. That's what's creating different outcomes for myself. And it's, it's creating a strength and a burning desire for, for love, um, a burning desire for, Humility, which is the desire to feel every feeling. Like, humility isn't about judgment or blaming ourselves or being self destructive. Humility is having the willingness to feel our emotions in the moment, in real time, as they're happening, and like actually wanting to do that, which most humans are conditioned out of so young. And there are so many opportunities to distract ourselves from those feelings. And judgments are just one of them. We become addicted to judging. And it's just as much of an addiction as drugs or alcohol. So for me, the key to moving out of this, and I'm still moving through this, is looking at myself honestly and not and noticing that the truth doesn't have to be. Um, if it feels uncomfortable, it's because we we've, we've looked at it in an unloving way, and we looked at ourselves and treated ourselves or another in an unloving way. And the way that we break that cycle is by treating ourselves in a loving way and treating others in a loving way. And that means we got to cut the judgments out too and develop a desire to make a different choice through our willingness to feel and just see the truth as it is, knowing that accepting that truth is what's going to heal. So how could I judge it? How? No, it's just simply being honest. Like, no, I didn't make as many loving choices as I could. I was not as developed as I thought I was. And I still have a lot of work to do on myself in terms of catching myself where I put on a facade because I'm scared of feeling something. I It, it always, it doesn't end up in a loving place for me to go down that road. So I've done the opposite recently in the past few months and it's been very humbling but it feels so much better, even though 
there's a shattering of this ideal that I wanted myself to be. It's, um, I just so much rather let it be messy if it's messy. Let it be a little bit, like, let myself not know what the truth is, not know what love really is until I feel, let life show me that with my choices and the effects of my choices and notice what's really true about what I feel. And having these feelings based on things that have occurred to us and being attacked in any way is not linked to our self-worth or our value as a human being. And I made a video about that recently. And uh, something about knowing that means that I don't want to... It, it just made it so that I... The desire to attack myself just kind of started wilting. And... I don't feel as drawn to making certain choices and I don't feel as drawn to doing things that don't feel true or honest, which means I have to reconsider making videos every time I make them out because the only way I can truly guide is by demonstrating examples and an example of the journey into understanding love through a human, one example of this in this world. I'm just one example of trying to understand love and truth as I grow and am willing to be really humble to the truth in myself every minute. Even if that might appear ugly or uncomfortable, it's in that honesty that everything transforms and I'm still learning it every day. I hope this made sense. <laughs> and um, if you do want to talk about experiences that, that you want to like get to the root of and what's blocking you to making the loving choice for you, that is something that I am moving through and continue to gain experience with. I'm happy to support you in that honesty without judgment. And guiding you into a place where it's okay to be as you are in this moment. And guiding you into a place where you feel safe to feel that. I offer half hour sessions now as well as 60 minute sessions. So if your finances aren't, so if you're not able to afford an hour with me, I have a lower rate for a half an hour. And you can find that through my website, thedailyinfusion.com, or email me at info at thedailyinfusion.com to set something up, and I would be happy to work with you. I hope that you continue to feel your life as deeply as you can, and see that it doesn't have to be so serious either, that while the things that happen to us might be serious and the feelings we have about them are really difficult to move through, there is a lightness that comes once we move through it over and over and over. It gets, it gets easier and I certainly feel lighter for it. And I feel just happier to know that I'm willing to feel all the time. Yeah. Anyway, I will talk to you soon. Much love.